界的时空。王子的火焰是谁触发的强决斗？穿上盔甲后的信念风起云涌，英雄峰会一出现在紧要的关头。等我与筹谋揭开封印的防空，自告奋勇的脉搏正在蠢蠢欲动。Actually, I didn't know if I would speak at the first place or the last. The idea was to give a little bit appetizers, or perhaps at this stage some Deutsche, some sweets at the end,、uh, which is more a matter of、um, interpreting, of getting a methodology of what we are actually talking about. And there are, of course, many different dimensions to it, and. Coming or having said, I would include some phenomen phenomenology and、uh, existentialism. I start at the end with what Simone de Beauvoir said:、uh, "All said, all done." This was the title of one of her、uh, biographies. Unfortunately, after writing this in 1972, she lived on. And this is, I think, what we should do now. And think about: we are at the end of the keynotes here. We are going on with the presentations in the workshops, and we should take something else. That was a discussion or a short talk between Aron, a French philosopher, and、uh, Sartre, where Aron said something like, "Mon petit camarade." My my little fellow, if we are here sitting in a cafe, and we are phenomenologists, we can actually talk about a cocktail as a philosophical question. And I think this is a contradiction, or this is a tension we have to think about when we are talking about sports as well. We have, on the one hand, the rules, the global sports. Industry today, where we cannot imagine what actually, on, in terms of money, flows and is involved, and at the same time, we have what has been presented here in many presentations, which what came up, the small-scale things where people interact, where people communicate, in terms of using sports as language. As matter of constituting their everyday life, and there is something. Another of these great philosophers came about.、Uh, he said, "We are talking about." It was a German philosopher, Dasein. Being here, being wherever we are, and this is something. If we consider this, we have to think as well what. Hannah Arendt called the fragmentation in modern life of modern lives made people more vulnerable to be swept away by demagogues. I think this can well be applied as well to this world of sports, where we do our own thing in being here, being shaping our own life, our own daily life, and being involved in something where. We actually don't see any hope. Where we are emerged by a huge machinery of industrial sports, and where we have to go global and feel our own identities threatened. But this Dasein, this being here and being there, means as well that we are that we are talking about emergence. From the roots, <clears throat> from the roots where we are, and we are shaping our own existence, our own existence with others, and this is what sports could be about. Let's just make a short walk on an empty sports arena. What do we see? We just see the field, the running tracks around. We see the different small patches for. Jumping or whatever, and then we see the different actors, and this is not only the athletes, but it's as well the spectators, 
It's everybody who is there. It is as well the people who are around and selling some sweets or some snacks or whatsoever. This is the scenery we have to imagine, and this is the scenery that is very particular in any different case. And then we have the spectators, as I said already, but it is a spe special group. And I wrote down here the, another word, <coughs> another term, the voyeurs. What are they actually doing? What are they doing? Why are they going there? Is it just really to take active part? Or is it what you said in your presentation as well, what you made clear, this film as something, as a projection of something we want? And we cannot achieve, but for this we go to the film and go in the film to the United States and do what we cannot do in reality. But at the same time, we do this in reality as a matter of small steps, of small steps in the field I just described. When we go there, when we try to make our own identity and try to live this conflict or this tension uh, that is actually there when it comes to active sport engagement. Phenomenology <coughs> is usually about description, it's about phen uh, phenomenon, and it is about intentionality. We all, whatever we do, have a certain intention to do what we do, to act. This is practice. It is not just this unconscious being, but it is being here and being there as a conscious way. We don't always think about every little step but nevertheless it is. And it is this what existentialism does. It's about acting. It is about feeling, not to forget. And it is about living, and really living in our daily lives. And it is about human individuals. This seems to be far away from Marxism, but I think it is actually not. There's a long debate and a wide debate uh, amongst philosophers and all these intelligent people uh, thinking what is the difference, where are the similarities. But I think the similarity is very much the concern with daily life of people and of people as a social being. Whatever we do, and I said it is about individuals, whatever we do, it is very much about shaping our own environment with others. And if this is an ongoing process. There was yesterday the question in this one session, looking for models. And of course we look for models and we have in sports, in particular we have rules, and otherwise we cannot engage in sports. This is what we do. But at the same time, talking about indigenous uh, sports, not least, we have this matter of rules, making rules, shaping rules, and making rules our own, appropriating them. If you look at the term appropriate, it is appropriating, taking them, but it is as well about appropriateness. What you said, women, they belong to it now, to the entire procedure. We cannot, or we hardly can think about it, it's not appropriate. So there is this process of um, appropriation, of setting rules, shaping rules, and it is as well, having a little bit of German background as well, I come to Mr. Schiller, um, the philosopher who said, man only plays when in the full meaning of the word he, has, he is a man. And this is not the man in terms of gender, but it's the other man. Um, and he is only completely a man when he plays. So it is this knowledge of rules and making the rules our own rules instead of letting us be in root. This is a matter as well of 
the economic system in which we are. And this links then to a wide discussion, I cannot go into details here, about the world we are living in. What is happening in the matter of a globalized economic process? This is not only the, global pro the, the economic process, but it is as well the matter of what we do with it. It is about using certain instruments, using certain tools, uh, but using it in our own way. And there is a huge scope that we can do, uh, that, that we can fill. And there's a huge scope as well in terms of making sports, living sports, not so much as a matter of this globalized economic uh, process, but as a matter of building commons. Commons are a social process. Commons are not least about non-commodifiable goods. It's a non-English term, really, uh, commodification. We don't have to make and we should not make everything as a commodity. This is commons having something in common, building something together, and this is something where we should say as well, commons are a right. A right we have to defend, a right of spaces, a right of uh, ideas that we can have in sports, be it indigenous or be it not. And this is, of course, then a permanent struggle as well, a permanent conflict. There is the one group who says no, no, no women in the dance, and the other says no, we, we need them. This is a permanent process of engagement. Unfortunately, the stronger is not necessary. The, the stronger is not necessarily uh, the one we like to be. But this is part of the game, and I think coming to the end. I want to have uh, want to point on, on four, point, uh, four, four issues that are a danger, that are a challenge, I think, and that uh, are a challenge we have to take up in defending this right of uh, commons. There is the issue of nationalism, and this is a, a perverted, I would say, a perverted way of commons that people think this is our nation, this is our identity, and this is all we have to strive for. It's not. The idea of it is doing something together with others, and of course this is as well in global sports, you are competing with others, you are, but you, are, you should not overemphasize you are competing as representative of your, um, your nation. There is the other thing, um, of ho hooliganism. It's going hand in hand with it, and it is another way of building commons. And this is something where we have to be aware of. The commons as such doesn't mean anything, but it has to be uh, filled with um, content, with life, with individuals uh, living. Commodification, I said, there Sports is now a market, uh, soccer teams are going to the stock markets, I never understand this really, and this actually stopped myself, stopped me from being interested in sports. Now this was a long time ago in the 70s or something, but uh, you see it's not just today. And then finally it's managerialization. We have to, I think, be aware of the importance of managerial rules in sports as well, but at the same time we should not allow managers to take over the actually simple thing we have in sports and that is fun. Thank you. <laughs>